Show yourself, creature. Do you not recognize me, brother? Am I so changed? Exiting the underworld, we begin our task of hunting down our brothers and Cain for their betrayal some 500 years ago. And what better place to start than the ruined sanctuary of clans? However, as we move to enter, we see a fledgling Dumahim and take care of the monstrosity. <laughs> However, we soon find our entrance is barred. The doors of the sanctuary were immovable, either barred from the inside or rusted shut. I would need to find another means of entry. Turning about face, we see a narrow chasm and heft a rock to take care of another fledgling Dumahim in our path. <laughs> Once the body is burned, we absorb its soul for its precious life essence and find a lingering Dumahim in which we can attack via stealth. Just ahead between two lit beacons, we find another warp gate. Exiting the warp gate, we're ambushed by another Doomahim. <laughs> However, without a way to finish our enemy, we then retreat and find ourselves at the cusp of the accursed Lake of the Dead. Turning, we see not even the Doomahim is game to approach. Crossing the rickety bridge, we then exclaim. This, at least, had remained constant. The endlessly swirling vortex of the abyss, my tomb, and the womb of my rebirth. Though much of Nosgoth's landscape had changed, these cliffs gave me my bearings. My clan territory was to the west, I was anxious to see how my descendants had fared during the centuries of my absence. Leaping over the hazardous chasm. We then enter the cave and find more Doomahim bar our path. A troubling sign for our clan. through a small wooden door. As we enter our old citadel, we find a trap has been sprung and a pair of Dumahim fledglings move from behind the pillars and begin their assault. As we execute our former brother's assassins under the auspices of our own defaced statue, the gate into our inner sanctum is opened, an invitation we willingly take. Stepping inside, we're shocked to find utter desolation. 
My once proud kin wiped from this world like excrement from a boot. I knew the hand that wrought this deed. Although ascending the stairs, we're not shocked to see a duo of adult Dumahim much more powerful than their counterparts. <laughs> With our sanctuary somewhat cleansed, we head to the door just to our right and find our own personal warp gate still intact. Heading back into the courtyard through the wooden door to the left, we learn the infestation of Dumahim is still prevalent. Deeper inside our stony fortress, we find ourselves in the open inner cloister where the Dumahim have taken up residence. With our enemies dispatched, we then begin to climb the spiral stairs of the old abandoned tower, but quickly find it hasn't been abandoned fully. Pulling the switch on the far wall, a drawbridge lowers. And we enter the inner bowels of the ruins, only to discover not even the roof had been spared by the Dumahim as acid rain begins to pour in and burns and singes our new blue flesh. Leaping to the nearby arch for a better vantage point, we see a new enemy in the distance. No! Please! I didn't recognize these flayed racks of flesh. Their scent was vampiric. But they gnawed upon their victim's carcass like dogs. Morbidly intrigued by these janky ghouls, we take flight and land between them. The first instinct is to attack. As their body thankfully burns like any other, we then turn to see another symbol that's familiar. Not the Dumahim, but instead another clansman we didn't expect to see in our old fortress. This charnel house bore the unmistakable marks of Melchiah's clan. To what depths had our dynasty plummeted if these ghouls were the descendants of my high-born brother? Were they so debased as to recruit fledglings from the desiccated corpses here interred? The ghoulish Melchiah then leaps into the ground and reappears, wrapped in racked flesh that it rends from its victims. Its beady red eyes belie only one instinct, feral hunger. <laughs> A 
exiting the graveyard to our right, we find under an archway a reprieve from the acid rain and see the ledge to our left is much too high to leap to and begin to utilize a square stone slab as leverage. Once we're atop the ledge, we turn a corner to see a macabre mural of our brother Melchiah. My brother Melchiah was made last, and therefore received the poorest portion of Cain's gift. Although immortal, his soul could not sustain the flesh which retained much of its previous human frailty. This weakness, it seemed, was passed on to his offspring. Their fragile skins barely contained the underlying decay. We're taking a moment to almost pity the visage of Malchiah. We're ambushed by one of his offspring. <laughs> With any semblance of pity now leaving us, we realize death is the only release in which they can wish for. We then find pathetic fledglings, barely sentient and desperately in need of new flesh. With the fledglings too stupid to avoid sunlight, we release them from the mortal coil, heading through the nearby ornate steel gate and descending stairs in what seems like forever in a claustrophobic spiral until we find Melchiah's own warp gate squirreled down underground, like the mausoleum itself. On the other side of the gate, we find a large open space and lake that seems to be comprised of acid, just like the unending rain. And by the far wall, we find our presence has disturbed another Melchiah slumber. <laughs> Attempting to cross the unforgiving lake, we make one miscalculation which casually tears the flesh from our body, sending us back to the bottom of the lake and the spectral realm. Feeding on the scavenging slua, we then head topside and return to the material realm, this time to cross the lake successfully. Once doing so, an adult Melkaihim challenges us on the cusp of the lake, but putting them on the back foot spells disaster for the ghoul's flesh. Inside the nearby mausoleum, we disregard the fledgling undead, but instead make a beeline for the door with Melkaihim's symbol smeared in blood above in deference for their master. Once inside, we find cavernous rocky walls that are narrow yet impossibly high. To our right around a corner, the burnt corpse that we cannot identify but was once one of Melchiah's subjects, we suspect. However, the corpse's fate and why this ornate mausoleum hasn't been plundered or perhaps it had, leaves us at a quandary. And so we follow Melchiah's symbols, which are adorned above a grate, and see that we cannot pass. It's then as we look around the mausoleum and its plentiful pillars, we then ascertain perhaps the spectral realm will move said pillars in favor of our needs. Beware, Raziel. These wraiths are vampire spirits fettered too long in the spectral realm. 
When their vampire natures adapt to this plane, they become eaters of souls. Do not allow these spirits to re-inhabit their corpses. Although we hear these vampiric rites, we cannot see the angle of their attacks. I wonder if they would see us as their kin, but a question is quickly answered. With our enemy defeated, we climb high atop a rocky ledge for a better vantage point and find a portal to phase shift back to the material realm. Once doing so, we leap to the ledge to our left and trace it to a nearby opening that is also barred. Seeing a stone block on the nearby ledge, we then quickly discern this is one of Soul Reaver's many block puzzles, and we learn the new ability to press L1 plus square to flip said block on the ledge above. In the room ahead, we find two platforms hanging by chains on either side of the room. Seeing our exit is on the platform just past them. We then leap across to the platform on the right. However, our weight begins to push down the platform. And so with our exit barred and no way to reach the platform, we see at the far side of the wall, another nook for a push block. Finding said push block nestled in the wall, we then begin to drag it down and across the room into the pit. being forced to fight vampire fledglings incensed by our intrusion. With the fledglings taken care of, we're then free to push the block up onto the next ledge and following the steps above, are able to push the block into its intended resting place. Perplexed, it's only when we enter the room from the same platform as before and see the two platforms, one raised and the other lowered, do we realize we must leverage our weightless spectral form as we pounce onto the higher platform, which doesn't shake and stir at our disturbance. And again, it should be mentioned, this is a brilliant use of this shifting mechanic and integrating it with puzzles in Soul Reaver. In the next room, we cannot leave it or attempt to solve its puzzle as we're still caught in the spectral realm, but also have to wait till our energy bar fills, which it naturally does when in the spectral realm. And so as we stand on the phasing portal, it's a good time to enjoy Raziel's idle scratching animation. On either side of the room, we then see a nook with a symbol embedded in the wall with two blocks present in the room. This puzzle is simple as all we need to do is find said symbols and make sure that they align with the symbol in the wall so that they unlock the bars ahead with a satisfying click. Making our way up the stone ramp and double doors, We then turn to our right and find ourselves back at the acid-washed lake. Ahead of us is another piece of a stamina unlockable, which is not accessible at this time. The only difference of our presence here is we see another stone block to our left, which we can push below. And as we follow it down, we see just to our right, a previously inaccessible ledge, which when utilizing two of the stone blocks together, we can now successfully scale.
Inside the narrow stone hall with wooden pillars that gird the walls, we follow it until we find another opening and small acid-like lake. Playing rock, paper, Melkiah with its lone sentry. On the other side of the lake, we find what appears to be a small entrance to a mausoleum. However, it's blocked by its own guardian, who mistakenly had been camping near a bonfire. <laughs> With the path clear, we enter the small mausoleum's metal door, finding inside two ghoulish fledglings, their brains so decomposed they seem to have little aversion to stepping into the deadly light. <laughs> Ascending the ramp, we begin to edge our way into the bowels of Melchiah's fortress, finding a certain malaise has overcome his followers as if they haven't fed in some time. Inside the spacious main hall, we step onto a large ornate platform, mechanical in nature. On the far side of the hall behind a pillar, we indeed find a switch to descend said platform. However, its mechanism needs to be in operation. And so we use the nearby metal grating lift to descend to the lower floors and we step over a dead Melkaim, his heart pierced. Quickly discerning his attacker, we see up a ramp a human bearing a crossbow and he puts said crossbow in the air to surrender to us, perhaps not knowing what we are and falling to his knees in deference. Now it should be noted, how you treat humans in Legacy of Cain can vary on how they will actually approach you. Some will worship Raziel, others will attack him on sight. Heading inside the nearby door up the ramp to our left, we then find a large machine room as we had divined. Repositioning the gears and then pulling the lever, we can then reactivate the machine. Back in the main hall with the ornate platform. We see the platform has subsequently dropped and although there are a few puzzles to get the platform and subsequent gate to open and to lower again, it's a bit of a needlessly intricate section and so instead we shall focus on what lies beneath the now unbarred tunnel ahead as a crimson glow welcomes us in the belly of the gladiatorial pit and an unsettling voice from the shadows to match. Show yourself, creature! Do you not recognize me, brother? Am I so changed? Melkiah? Yes, brother. You should have stayed where the master sent you, Raziel. You will find Nosgoth less pleasant than you remember. What has become of my clan? Answer me, little brother, or I will beat an answer from your horrid lips. Everyone is afraid, sibling. You awake to a world of fear. These times of change are so... unsettling. Do you think I feel no revulsion for this form? Do you believe for a moment that our lord would risk his empire upon an upstart inheritance. Enough riddles. What are you saying? 
You are the last to die. The gargantuan amalgam of flesh then falls in us, and as we back up, we see its individual bodies scurrying as hands and feet ducking between our brother's bites. As we attempt to hit him with our own glancing blows, he mockingly laughs. <laughs> Attempting to find an exit from this pit, we then see Malkia phase through the very gladiatorial cage as if it was nothing. Desperate, we back up to where we found Malkia and see this is probably where he watches the gladiatorial matches and feeds, and spy high above his mechanical grinder, he no doubt puts his victims in to sort through their skin later. Attempting to activate the grinder, we find the switch will not move, and Malkai's bloated form menacingly begins to edge nearer. Skirting the outside of the round pit, we then spy an archway we can perch upon for a moment of respite. Malkai peers up at us patiently. Realizing that we cannot face him, we leap down into the room and find a lever in which we can open the spiked grate and as Melchia attempts to enter, we release it upon his bloated carcass. <laughs> However, the spikes cannot hold. Melchia, enraged and with a snarl, bites deep into her flesh, forcing us into the spectral realm where he, in his phased form, can still attack us. Desperately searching for any speck of spectral energy we can feed upon, When our energy bar is full and we're once again made whole, we shift into the material realm. Malkia, desperate and hungry, begins to stalk us once more and we execute the same falling spike move on his neck. Somehow in the distance, we then hear that the lever to Melchiah's personal grinder has fortuitously come loose. Perhaps it can only be activated after the cages in which his victims lie are open. Whatever the case, we need the fleshy amalgam called Melchiah inside of that cage. And thus, we jump into his bloody gladiatorial pit, waiting for him to hungrily follow. We leap over the fence and race to activate the lever while he is still trapped inside. Tell me, Melchiah, where can I find Cain? The master is beyond your reach, Raziel. He makes himself known when he sees fit, not when commanded. You have done well, Raziel. Am I reduced to this? A ghoul? A fratricide? Elevated, Raziel. Not reduced. Consuming Melchiah's soul has endowed you with a new gift. Insubstantial barriers such as these are no impediment to you in the Spectral Realm. Will yourself to pass through, and you shall. With Melchiah's putrid essence now a mist, we had absorbed his essence, and in the spectral realm, can successfully phase through grates as Melchiah once did. With our new ability, the impediment of grating that bars us from the Sanctuary of Clans and Cain's throne is now accessible. But that is for the next episode. So make sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with the videos. And if you want to support the channel in a more personal way, consider becoming a Patreon member. As always, thanks for watching 
And until next time, traveler.